it's Steph. Welcome to my channel. I haven't recorded for three months, so I'm really happy to be back here. Uh, you may be wondering why it's been so long since I recorded. Uh, I, a few months ago, I got hired at a full-time job, which is really, really exciting. Before then, I was working a few part-time jobs. I'm still working those part-time part jobs, so it's been an adjustment. All these good things are happening, just adjusting to a new schedule and getting that worked out. So that's been why I haven't recorded for a little bit. Today's video is all about the 21 books that I said I want to read in 2021. So this is a follow-up to a video I made back in January of 2021. You can see that link down below in the description. And this is all about those books. You can see why I read those books in the description down below watching the video. But today I'm not going to chat about the books too much. I'm just going to tell you whether or not I actually got to them. So let's see how many of them I read this year. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more fun content like this for me. I've got lots of ideas and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. All right. So I have been doing a lot of reading. I have been getting over being sick this holiday season and I have rediscovered my love of dark chocolate. So of those three things, one of them has to do with today's topic. So we are going to get started with that. The first thing I said in my video was that I wanted to read all six of Jane Austen's novels. They have all six of those novels. I read three of them. Pride and Prejudice, Persuasion, and Northanger Abbey. Next one that was on the list was Gone with the Wind. I read this right at the very beginning of last year. Thought I gained some great insight into the story. The movie version of Scarlet isn't my favorite. Thought I'd get some insight into her character motivations in the book. It's just not my favorite story, but I invested over 50 hours of listening to this audiobook, so at least I can check that off my list. And it's one of the longest books I read in the year. Next up on my list was War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. This is one I did not get to this year. It was on my agenda. I was going real strong with the classics in the beginning of 2021. And then I kind of rediscovered my love of fantasy books. So then I kind of steered off into reading tons of popular fantasy series to see if I liked them or if they were living up to the hype. The next one on this list was The Complete Poems of Emily Dickinson. I did get to read that. And it was interesting because I do enjoy poetry. But I was reading some of her poems and kind of feeling like I was not connecting with them as much as I thought I would. But I still enjoyed the way that she writes and her talent. It just wasn't as much of what I thought it would be. So that was an interesting learning experience. Next up we have a Charles Dickens book. I've previously read a few of his. I wanted to read another one of his this year. And this was Tale of Two Cities. And let me tell you, I did read this book. And listen to it, which is seriously the only way I got through this book. That plus Spark Notes. I started going on Spark Notes, reading their chapter summaries just to make sense of what I was reading, to be able to understand the political influence of the day, to understand the foreshadowing and Dickens' writing better, and understand the symbolism behind it and what was popular during his time period. That is literally the only way I would have really gotten through that story and be able to understand it the way I do. That being said, it wasn't my favorite, but I'm glad that I can check that off my list as a book that I wanted to get to in my lifetime. Next one we have was Best Laid Plans by Sarah Eden. This is one of my favorite authors. So I was so glad I checked this out. This was a short novella, but it was really, really well done. And it just generated all the more hype because in the beginning of 2021, I did not know when her final book in these two series was going to happen. It was like so hyped. And then she announced, I want to say after Best Laid Plans came out, that the super hyped book that came out was going to come out in October of this year. And it was my most anticipated book of the year. And it was fantastic. So I'm so, so glad that I got to read this book, which set up the stage for the final book in both of these series. And it was a fantastic crossover. Next up, we have Winnie the Gentleman by Christy Ann Hunter. This is very much a grumpy sunshine book, which I love to read about. It's one of my favorite tropes. I really enjoyed this book, and I'm really glad that I got to read it. Next up, we have To Write a Wrong by Jen Toronto. This was a hilarious story about two authors. So it's really great insight into these authors and the way their minds think in the story and it's also fun because this is in the mid to late 1800s where women are starting to gain more independence and it's very much girl power so our main female writer is writing under a pen name and we get to see how secrets come about and the development of it was really great and it also has a mystery element in this story so it's kind of a romance suspense mystery kind of thing going on 
Next one we had was Dreams of Savannah by Rosanna White. I did want to read this. I did start reading this, but I ended up not continuing to read it with the intent to revisit another time. It was Civil War based, which is fine. I've read other Civil War books, but it just felt too heavy for me at the time that I wanted to read it. I did start this early in the spring of 2021, and there was still so much happening with the pandemic. I just wasn't feeling it, so I figured I'll revisit that at another time. Next one we have was Let It Be Me by Becky Wade. This one was excellent, a five-star read for me. So, so good. The character development as well as the humor, everything was just so well done. The next one we had was Sarah Adams. This was in one of her rom-coms that just came out in the beginning of the year. And she's since published two more books, but this is the Off Limits role. I said I wanted to read that and I'm very glad that I did. It wasn't my favorite. It's still not my favorite of hers, but I really did enjoy her writing. I also had The Merchant and the Rogue by Sarah Eden. This was the next in her Dread Penny series. This was thoroughly enjoyable and I really enjoyed getting to know these Irish siblings better in this story as well as meet a new character in Fira. She was just an excellent protagonist to read about. Next up we have The Cousins by Karen McManus. This was very similar to Knives Out, the movie Knives Out, and I really really enjoyed the mystery, the suspense, as very often happens with her books. I cannot put them down once I start. Um, this one kept me guessing and kept me on my toes, which I really really enjoyed. Next up we have Mr. Gardner and the Governess by Sally Britton. I really like Sally's work, so I was glad that I got to read this one, and it sets the stage up for another book in the series. I think they're gonna be two more books in this series and I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen with the next character so hmm. also one of the few regencies I've read where both the man and the woman are from the working class as opposed to being the gentry or you know high society next up we have pachinko this is a super popular like trendy book and I love the cover I think the, the cover is gorgeous this was a lot heavier than what I bargained for this was really this was not my cup of tea. There were triggers in the book that I did not know about beforehand. Felt very heavy, very, very sad. And I'm not saying books can't have that element, but I kind of needed like a little mix of other emotions. Um, it just was like really, really heavy. Random scenes that were just way more graphic than they needed to be. And then there was a very sudden self-harm scene about three quarters of the way through the book that was just like shocking and kind of upsetting to read. So yeah, not my favorite book, but I did want to share those triggers and those updates for you in case you're considering reading it. So I can appreciate the historical glimpse into what it was like for people growing up during the time periods that spans multiple generations, the difficulties and challenges that this community has gone through and this family has gone through over different generations. Just uh, one that you're going to want to read when you're up for a heavier read if that's something you're interested in. And last but not least, we have The Silence Between Us. I did want to have Disability Rep on this list because that is a priority for me to read those books. And this was fantastic Disability Rep. The main character in this story is deaf. She's got hearing aids. She moves from a deaf school in New Jersey. Her family moves to Colorado, I think it is. Um, so she's a senior in high school talking about accessibility in school, applying to jobs, applying to colleges, and the challenges with people interacting with her sign language interpreter instead of her and people talking over her or past her. Also talks about medical accessibility because there's a scene where she has to go to the hospital and communicate to someone and they aren't able to communicate very efficiently with her. So it's really, really interesting to see not only a glimpse of that in a realistic setting, but also see things that people who are in the same boat as her get to experience or have trouble with when they go about in the world. Romance was really sweet. She meets this guy who wants to start to get to know her. So he starts learning sign, and making a goofball of himself, and she's willing to help him eventually kind of isn't something she jumps at real quick, but he's very sweet, very welcoming, and they get to know each other, and we get to see what that's like for this couple to kind of develop feelings for one another. She's deaf and he's hearing and learning about each other in the process. So I thought it was really, really well done. It also is one of the only books that really kind of explains the hearing aid cochlear implant differences, as well as the reasons why someone may not 
want a cochlear implant if they are deaf. All that to say, I thought it was interesting. I really enjoyed reading the representation as well as the romance. I thought it was entertaining, sweet, and I really enjoyed this. So if there are any books that you read this year that are on this list, be sure to leave me a comment down below. If there are any of them that sound interesting, let me know that too. And if you got to the end of this video, be sure to leave me a little book stack emoji uh, in the comments to let me know you got this far. Thanks so much for watching. I am going to make a 22 videos for 2022 but I haven't decided on the final list yet. So I will let you know once I do. And thanks so much for watching. As always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.